So hi guys, <clears throat> in the last video, we our unit converter reached this stage where we have an input, a kilometer input, basically we asked the, the user for a kilometer input, he, put, he input it, we convert it to a float, then we have a dictionary with all those conversion factors and uh, you know conversion types, and then we loop through the whole thing to get our conversion. So basically, let's give it a shot. Save a five, and I input like 32, and I would get all those conversions. Right, so everything is, in principle, our unit converter is basically working, and uh, uh, yeah, now we've got to finish it up, basically. And let's go back to the, to the unit converter I'm trying to emulate here, which is basically the, the unit converter on Google. And now here, I'm just going to focus on length right now, because the others are going to be done in a similar fashion as length. So here, what you do, you have, you input three things. First of all, the value you wish to convert, then the unit you wish to convert from, and then the unit you wish to convert to. And I would like our unit converter to be able to do the same thing. And in principle, it does. But it's ours is just limited to this and where you just input like uh, where it just converts to miles, yards and nautical miles. And I would like to expand our unit converter to be able to handle all types of conversions, just like here. So how do we go about it? Well, that's got to be that's got to be changed because the user is not going to be inputting just kilometers. He could put input anything. And he has to specify as well um, what he wishes to convert from and what he wishes to convert to. So in essence, we need the user to input three things. The value, i.e. the number. Then what he wishes that number to co what, what he wishes to convert that number from and what he wishes to convert that number to. So let's do that. Let's take out these old inputs and input the new inputs. So those are the inputs that we need from the user. Value input, where he inputs the value. Then from input, the unit he wishes to convert from. And the to input, the unit he wishes to convert to. And obviously these are the texts that the user sees. Now, our dictionary has to be restructured as well, because now currently our dictionary just converts kilometers to whatever, or to just yards, feet, and nautical miles. We've got to expand our dictionary. And judging by the inputs that we're getting, I mean, let's let's. What would the user input? Well, the first one would be a, a number, let's say twenty-three. Then the next one would be kilometers, and the next one would be, let's say, miles. So basically, then what the application's got to do is it's going to take that 23, look up in the dictionary, kilometer to mile conversion, what is the factor? Oh, it's 0 0.62, then take that 0 0.62 and multiply it by 23. So in essence, what we have to do is we have to create a dictionary where the key is basically that those two. So my key would, the key that, that we, we, we need in our dictionary would be something like this. Kilometer to mile, 0 0.62, comma. Kilometer to yard would be uh, 10.93, and so on. So that's the way our dictionary would look. And I've generated such a dictionary. It was a tedious bit of work, but it's got to be done. And the dictionary would look something like this. So I have here conversion factors, and you see here I have all types of conversions. So kilometer to kilometer, meter to kilometer, centimeter to kilometer, and so on. So all these are all types of conversions to kilometer. All these are all conversions to meter, to centimeter, to millimeter, to nanometer, inch mile, inch yard, and so on. Now I space them here for readability and I advise you when you have some large pieces of data 
which is typical in, in, uh, in real-world applications, best is to separate them for readability because I could put all that in one line, you know, but it's much easier to read and to detect errors if you put it like this in a readable way, and you see, I, this is the opening uh, curly brace of the of the dictionary, and down here is the closing curly brace of that dictionary. So you see, I've I have um, just spaced everything out just for readability. This is a very important thing, especially if you're looking for errors or something not working. It's very, 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 very um, uh, hard to deal with the dictionary where everything is, you know, like. In, in one line or uh, uh, huddled together, right? Um, and yes, I could have obviously abbreviated these terms like Kalam. I could have said here KM to KM or N to KM, but ultimately our app should be a web app similar to the Google Unit Converter. And here, you input the to and from units with a drop down. You're not going to be typing them in. And this is ultimately my goal with our unit converter. So I would like my dictionary to be complete in that it has the full name of the of the of the to and from units because ultimately the user is not going to type them in. He's going to uh, you know input them through a drop down. So we now as a developer have to input the full name, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, no user is going to do that. Right. Okay. So now we have basically restructured the application. And now we've got to do some a bit of work. For instance, let me just copy that because the dictionary is so long. And I'm going to go on down here. And the first thing I've got to do is basically... Uh, take that value input and got a, you know, it is obviously a string and I've got to convert it to a float. So let's create a new variable, conversion value. This is the value that we, conversion value. This is the value that we wish to convert. And that is basically a float of value input. Okay, so that's done. I don't need this anymore. Now, Second thing I've got to do is I've got to generate my key. We're already using here the term my key for uh, the dictionary key. So let's my key is equal to string of the from input. Okay. Now, if I look at the dictionary keys, uh, they are basically the from unit hyphen to unit. So I've got to add here a hyphen plus hyphen, and then plus string and two units, a uh, two input. Right, so that's my key. And obviously I don't need the loop anymore because I, I'm just gonna input one thing. I mean, the, the user wishes to convert, let's say from kilometer to miles. So I'm just gonna input the mile conversion. I don't need to input everything. So let me remove that and take print up here. And that stays the same. So conversion type here, my key. We have done that, that's right. Conversion value, kilometer value is not valid anymore, but it's called conversion value instead of kilometer value. Conversion value. You see now we've generalized our, our, uh, our unit converter to handle any type of conversion as long as it's the length. Uh, is our dictionary still called conversion factors? Yes, it is, and so on. So, so basically, our app is now done and let's give it a test try. So save it and run. So please enter value you wish to convert. Uh, let me put in, let's put in the one above 32. Unit to convert from, well, kilo, kilometer. Unit to convert to, let's do mile and something went wrong here. Oh, I kept these. How oh, silly of me. I should have taken them off. I just copied them to, 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 you know, to see the variable names, but 
I don't need it. That's why I'm having this error. Okay, save it. Let's run it again. Okay, enter a value which to convert. Let's take 32 again. Unit to convert from a kilometer and unit to convert to mile. And there we go, 19.884, exactly as above. So let's replicate the second one. Let's, for instance, again, let's F5. Convert, uh, let's again take the 32, this time kilometer to a yard. And we get the 34.995. Great. But the beauty is now we can convert anything to anything. So let's do another conversion. 15. Convert from, let's take mile to centimeter. And there we go. So we basically um, have now emulated the Google unit converter. We can convert with this, with this, with this code, we can convert from any length to any length. And obviously, if we need to add some more lengths, then we have to enhance our dictionary. Okay. Um, we can have, we, I can add another thing here because is what if, what if the guy, what if the user inputs anything let's let's try it out for instance uh let's go f5 again and let's say 15 and let's say he wishes to convert from jack to john and we get an error now this here is not a nice thing to have basically here what what happens is that pro the program failed how can we avoid that well here's a new concept which is called the if if is a pretty important concept, you see it in all programming languages, and basically if divides the world into two things. Those things that fulfill the condition, if has, and the rest who don't fulfill it. So basically in, in normal English you'd say, if I was rich, okay? So now the next statement would be the things that I would do if this condition, rich, was fulfilled, Otherwise, I would do those things that I, if my condition, i.e. being rich, is not fulfilled. And the same thing here <clears throat> is we can add here a condition if my key in so I'm basically saying if that key is in this dictionary, then print that statement. Otherwise, i.e. else, colon, print your inputs do not make any sense. Okay, if I save that and run it, if I input a normal input, 32 kilo, or let, let, let me, something else, uh, let's go, um, what we got, yard to centimeter, this is a legit input and I'm getting a legit output. Now, let's run it again. And let's input uh, 26, and I'm saying John to Frank. And now the if condition, now I'm getting the else, basically your inputs do not make any sense, but the program has not failed. This is very important. Um, and this is the way the if condition works. Uh, another thing I would like to add in this video is if you do something like this,
Now, this is a, is a quite dangerous thing because your string begins with this and, oops, and it terminates here because Python doesn't know that this is not the end of the string but basically just a, an apostrophe for the T. Now, there are two ways about going handling this. One way is to use escape. Basically, uh, an escape is ba a backslash. Backslashing stuff means that this is being escaped. That means this is not the end of the string, but is actually an apostrophe in that string. That's very important. Or that's one way of handling things. The other way is you keep the thing like this, but then you go and do double quotes. So and that thing is then also handled. So it's up to you how to handle such things. Either you escape single quotes when you have your strings in single quotes, or in that instant or in those instances where you have apostrophes in your string, then just use double quotes. Doesn't matter how you do it, Python doesn't care. Just you know, pick your style and stick to it. So, so that basically takes us now a step further. We are now able to convert all types of lengths to any type of length. And, and now we even have a condition where if the user inputs any gobbledygook, uh, the code would output that. 